Okay. Uh, so I haven't looked at these replays ahead of time, so we'll see what happens. Um, I'll just go through it once um, and talk about, again, whatever I sort of see first. So you are playing Egypt against Maya on Himalayas, standard rules. Uh, okay, you got a couple of citizens queued up. I'm assuming you're Tinkleberg based on the fact that three players sent me had Red as the primary player. Uh, so the first thing I'm looking at is that you're not researching anything. And the second thing I'm looking at is that you're researching science second instead of first. Um, so just like ordering wise, you got to think about what your bottlenecks are. Um, in this circumstance, you're not actually waiting on Civic to do anything. Like it's not like you you got these guys to build a city or anything. Um, so if you think about the order, because you're not bottlenecked by Civic, it's always better to get science and then Civic because the science is going to make your scout have better line of sight and he's going to increase, or he's going to get um, better ruins bonuses. Each level of science is plus 25. So if you're doing a civic and science opening and then not building a city until both of them are researched anyway, definitely go science and then civic seconds. As I definitely need some more water because I'm dehydrated. Um... I am a little concerned about the empty farms. I don't know if that's an actual strategy, because um, I, I just played China like 90% of my game, so <laughs> I don't really know um, in detail what other nations use uh, for early game strategies, like economically. Um, I would like to quickly comment on your city placement. I don't really like this location. Unless your third city is going to be down here or over here. Because it's Himalayas, you know ahead of time that all the wood is on the border of the map, like that. Um, so you know for a fact that this city is almost definitely not going to have any good access to wood. Um, like, it pushes territory nicely, but it doesn't have wood access. So, given that I don't think you're really that concerned about them straight up rushing you, like they're not Don's Romans, they're Maya, I don't think Maya has like, yeah, they don't have anything that would necessarily make them rush, um, so I would have preferred your second city to be economic rather than for border push, which means you should have built it, uh, if you built one here, that would have been okay, you could build one here, but then its territory would like do nothing, so I probably wouldn't bother with that one, so here looks good, uh, if you built one, ooh, I don't know if that was in your territory or not, but here, if that was in your territory, it might have been okay. Uh, and if not, even just one here would have been okay. So what are you getting now? Okay, you got military one, I'm not sure why. Um, again, think about what's bottlenecking you right now. Are you using that military- oh, holy shit, don't build a two-man woodcutter's camp. Um, it's really inefficient. Uh, yeah, so don't, don't do this. Um, the only reason you do this is if you have absolutely no other option, and you definitely have lots of other options. You could have built one here, and then just put a third city here, um, and then it would have been in lumber mill range. If you put one here, it costs a shit ton of food to build this relative to how much wood it actually gives you. And if you build a lumber mill, the bonus is tiny because there's just not enough. Um, there's just not enough that is like enough income that amplifying it doesn't really mean anything. You're only slightly over caps, so I'm not going to complain about that. But I will complain about your military research again. Um, You are not hitting the pop cap yet. Military costs, or well, military one costs food. 
Yeah, you're, you're not building anything that required you to have Military 1, and you're not hitting pop caps, so... All this Military 1 did was actually delay your Classical Edge. So you could have reached Classical, like, 15 seconds ago, instead of 5 seconds ago. Um... Mm, I'm just trying to think if this many farms is actually worth it. I'm thinking it isn't, because they're not manned. Um, you'd be better off, I think, I'm pretty sure you're better off not manning the farms. Sorry, not building the farms if you're not going to man them immediately. Um, you're not short on food. The only reason you do this is if you need food, for example, if you're trying to rush um, an age upgrade for something. But because you're not doing that, it doesn't really make sense what you're doing. Um, the other thing is you're not building, uh, well, you're not really building enough things. Like, you have all of these resources and they're not really accomplishing anything. Um, the only reason in the game to actually have resources is so that the resources can do something. Any resources which you have just sitting there are actually not doing anything at all. So you definitely want to be like, you want to pump out, let's say, five citizens from this city and just tell them to build a mine here or something. Um, and then you can go around building granary, lumber mill, smelter, that sort of thing. Probably not smelter yet because you don't have, yeah, you don't have science three. But you get the idea, like, you always want to be trying to use these resources to build something, um, whether that's economic or military. Security McDudes. Um, could use a little bit more help scouting around. Again, this is his time is a resource. Whenever you're not using his time to accomplish anything, it's a waste of a resource. Um, and you always want to try to be more efficient rather than less efficient. Stables is pretty late. Also, yeah, you have this ginormous amount of food, probably because you have so many farms. Um, so, <coughs> you can convert this food into timber and metal by building like five citizens here, five citizens here, and then sending them to like lots of mines and shit. And building granaries and universities, oh well, not universities, granaries and lumber mills and stuff. Yeah, speaking of universities, your universities were super late, man. Um, I think part of the reason is because you built all these farms, um, but they're not manned. So you spent a lot of timber on the farms and then got like, I think it's 20, 20 food? For completing them, maybe 25, I forgot. Um, again, just that's really inefficient. Um, with these chariots, I'd recommend you like waypoint them over, over here or something so that this guy doesn't sit around doing nothing. Once again, this is a resource, his time is a resource. Um, and having him sit there and do nothing is inefficient. I, I would have liked to see a couple more people in that Colossus because you have this giant food float. Um, what you could do also with this food is research Civic 2 and then build another city here, or build another city here, or build another city here. Uh, again, this city would be, and this city would be economic, like there would be for wood production and some metal production if you want it there. Um, but they wouldn't push the border much. It would give you taxation border, but like it's not aggressive border push, it's not towards the enemy. Um, so given that your second city is kind of in a really bad location economically, I would definitely consider your third city to be economic rather than border push. Uh, you're sitting on still a giant float. Uh, I'd love to see a temple or some... No, really just a temple and maybe a... a um tower over in the city. I wouldn't mind a tower in the city given that you're not building troops either. You should really be either building some troops, some light troops, or you have defenses. Um, so that if you are attacked you don't just lose the game outright. Again, the city placement is pretty poor. Um, strategically, what does the city accomplish? Let's have a look at so let's keep Fog of War on for now. 
Um, so look around at where this forest is. Again, this is Himalayas, so we know for a fact where the forest spawns. So it's going to be like maybe spawning along this line here. So this city doesn't access it. Um, if we toggle the vision, yep, we can see that it doesn't really access anything other than some mountains and some pretty crap forest. This isn't awful, but it's not good. Um, this is maybe a one, two, three, four forest forest man camp. We just check. Yeah, four citizens. So, sorry. Um, it would be much more efficient to just put a city there or here, and it could access like this area here. But oh well. Um, and also, if you're going purely for border push, you 100% should build a temple here first, rather than um, like building a naked expansion with no temple. Uh, you have 1500 food, so please queue 5 citizens out of here or something. You really just need to put these resources to use doing something. Uh, a couple more caravans. You unfortunately don't see this stuff down here. Um, but yeah, the, the biggest thing I'm seeing is just you have all these resources and you're not using them. And when you do have resources, oh sorry, when you are like building things, you're building and researching things in odd orders. Um, orders that don't uh, don't aid rapid expansion, like they're not the most efficient ways to do things. Um, and just again, for example, building farms and then not manning them, or researching civic and then science, but then not using the civic, or researching military one and then not using the military one until after you research classical stuff like that. Uh, it's a little light on wealth. How many caravans do you have? Two? Are you building a third? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you see this, so I definitely want a merchant there. Your government is a little bit late, but I don't think that's the biggest issue here. Uh, the biggest issue is still your your giant float. If you look over... Okay, he's doing the same thing, so... <laughs> I'm not going to use him as an example. He has 2,000 timber. So yeah, you actually have enough resources to literally build an army big enough to take this guy over. Um, or you have enough resources to build another two cities and then completely fill them with buildings. Not not literally with 900, but like with this income plus um, the 900, you could do that. I don't love that you got commerce 3, I think that's a waste because you're already getting Republic. Again, you just got to think about what's your current bottleneck? What is stopping you from from getting a better economy and a better military? Um, usually the reason you don't get more military is because your economy is not good enough. In this case, your economy... Uh, it's okay. It's a little poor for what's happening. Um, part of that's because you're not building like the amplification buildings, like you haven't built... Oh, you, you recently built a lumber mill, okay. But you haven't built a, for example, you haven't built a smelter here, you just put one down, yeah, okay, that's good. Um, you have researched that, I don't know if Egyptians get that for free, maybe they do. No, they don't. Oh, hang on. Receive granny upgrades. Okay, so you didn't manually research that. I want to see you research this. And this, well, I actually want to just see you press tab and research everything you can, except the library tech. And maybe the unit upgrades. Like, I definitely want to see you have taxation in both of these. Um, I want to see you using these resources to either get science for or gunpowder or civic. Uh, you didn't need the military because you're not using that for anything. Um, Oh, you, you upgraded your your light and ranged cav, but the light and ranged cav are barely in combat, so it's a very inefficient use of resources. The actual combat boost you got is one ranged cav. Um, these guys, it doesn't matter what tech level they are until they're fighting, and they're not fighting yet. So, that like this tech level is not a bottleneck until these guys are about to be in combat. So you don't need to research it yet. You can use those resources for something else. Tonto's good. Um, your income's pretty rounded right now, so that's good. That means it's a, a really good time to build up some military. 
So you can grab a barracks, you can grab... You have military 3? Yeah, you have military 3, so you can put down a fort. Um, let's say you put down a fort... Uh, here. Here would be pretty good. Because it sort of bottlenecks them, but you have access on both sides. So let's say you put down a fort here. Um, at that fort you can research the armor upgrade. So that your senator who's not currently doing anything um, could give everyone plus four armor instead of plus two armor. Go over here, find out what's there. This guy's not doing anything. So that's a minor waste of resources. Again, units that don't do anything cost resources to build, but if they're not doing anything, they're not like achieving anything for those resources. Um, yeah, you have this giant flood of resources. You have 2,000 everything but knowledge. Have you gone through and researched everything you can? No, you haven't. So that's that's something that's really easy to work on. Just press tab. And look at what's available. And when you have this many resources, you don't even need to think about whether it's useful. You just research it. And it's going to be useful sooner or later. Because once you have this many resources, it's basically impossible to use them all up accidentally. So just like... Maybe not the library, and maybe not unit upgrades either, but just like go through, research one of these. I don't know which one you prefer, but research one of them. And then play to its strength. Definitely research taxation, research that, research this, research both of these. And then you're back to library. Um, so you know, build a fort here, build a, I don't know, maybe a couple barracks, a siege. Maybe build another stable over here. Um, get your senator up over here with the fort and stuff. I hope this game doesn't last like 8 hours. <laughs> mm, okay. I'm gonna ask you what you think you accomplished with this city. Is it just there for border push? And if so, you need to build a temple out there right now. And you need to have units defending it. So these guys should be over here. Um, you should have more troops than that. This guy should absolutely also be over here if you're building it for border push. Uh, I'm not really sure what the castle's there for. Um, so let's quickly think about castle placement, right? In relation to building it near a city. Let's toggle off the fog of war so it's easier to think about. Blue is with... Let's pretend that this army is five times as big and has siege weapons. But it doesn't. But let's pretend it does. They're going to go like here. They're going to hit the castle before they attack the city. It's unlikely that they're going to come through here and attack the city. Because if they do that, then their flank is exposed from, from here. So they want their back and their sides to be pretty safe. So they come through here. If they come through here, then it's hard for you to attack here and it's hard for you to attack here. So they're going to be sitting like here and they're going to destroy this castle before they even touch the city. A better thing to do would have been to build the castle over here. The rocks kind of get in the way, but sort of over here-ish. Um, which means if they attack from here, they can't kill the castle first. They have to attack the city first. Um, which means your troops can be standing here, and they can make sure the city doesn't get captured. And in that time, when they try to, when they walk up and try to capture the city, your fort's going to be shooting them the entire time. Okay, you're on H5, you still have, <laughs> you have two or three thousand resources, um, so that's uh, a bit worrying. These guys should build a temple, like maybe not there, but around. Okay, you're building some military, that's better late than ever, I suppose. Now uh, this, this fort's okay. <coughs> uh, I thought these were lookouts for their stockades. Um, so, if you're building stockades like this, I'd Personally, it's hard to show you because um, I can't build on top of that because you've already built stockades there. But instead of building them like here and here, like that and that, which you've done over here, um, what you can do is shift them up slightly and put them one one back, one away from the fort. Shift them towards the enemy, but 
push them, like, pull them back one away from the fort. So you build there instead of there. You build there. Um, and the reason for that is the, like, these two are not going to be able to shoot very much until the fort dies. But if you put them slightly further up, they have a good chance to shoot before the fort dies. And so, for example, this one, you might want to put it there has a better chance of, of shooting something that walks up here and walks up here um, and it's slightly better at shooting stuff that's directly in front but at the same time it's difficult for them to um, actually like siege it if it's there because when you attack a building with siege you're, you're shooting the center of the building um, and the center of this is like just here the center of the fort is just there so if they're sieging the fort, then the fort is closer to them than the, the, the tower is. It's easier for them to shoot the fort first and the, the tower second, even if you move the tower up. And the reason I want them displaced by one, like one square back, is just so that they don't accidentally get hit by splash damage. Especially this late into the game, um, when both players are kind of playing really slow. And like almost no fighting whatsoever and you're both building militaries really really late um, you gotta start worrying about um, bombers and, and that sort of thing um, okay so massive criticism on your army type um, get them all to go on your, your general dude your patriot just like select all of these right click your patriot so they all rally point onto your Patriot, and then you can just like make them army one or something. Um, but as to your unit comp, uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you, it's in one word awful. Um, light Cav is... Out of, out of all the units you can currently build, Light Cav Sorry, all of the military units you can build out of either of these two buildings. Light Cav is the worst out of all of them for a direct fight. Uh, so this is incredibly inefficient. The other thing, like you just want these to be heavy cav instead. The other thing you want to look at is you've used all the wood up because you've built... Uh, if we go through like all the units that you can build, this is food and timber, this is food and metal. This is food and timber, this is metal and wealth, and this is timber and wealth. So you've noticed that this guy, and this guy, and this guy all cost timber to build, so now you have a timber shortage. Instead of doing that, you could have built heavy cav, and then you have all this extra timber. And then you can make your army like even bigger. So if, if you replace the light cav with heavy cav, maybe keep the range cav, because why not? They have, they have two guns, and two guns is cool. Um, <laughs> you can um, build an army twice the size. Like you can afford to build another ten of, or maybe not ten, another eight of these, another eight of these, and like some more heavy cav. And again, just rally point them all onto your patriot, and that way they'll all be in the same group. You just like make them group one or whatever group you want. Um, I'd also recommend you keep a scout or two with your with your battle group, like your army. Um, like, you don't really need these two guys to be here. Especially with that observation post going up. Um, if you place them with your army, that'll deal with... Okay, it won't, it won't deal with spies very easily, but it, um, it will allow you to see the spies. So, even if they, your scouts won't be able to... Wow. Okay. Even if your scouts won't be able to um, use counterintelligence, this thing, which they do automatically, if you didn't know, I don't, I don't know what your like game knowledge level is at. Holy shit! What the fuck are these? Okay, this guy's army comp is even worse than yours. I don't know if this is um, uh, your friend or not, because your names are different. <laughs> but uh, yeah, his army comp is even worse than yours. But um, yeah, so biggest thing is stop building stuff that costs timber. So like, I wouldn't build more of those. I definitely wouldn't build more of these or these. Just build like 10 heavy cav, 
and like build another few uh, heavy infantry. And you're building, you're getting industrial, that's good. I wouldn't mind a second library. Do you have two? Okay, you do have two. Where's the second one? Okay, it's just here. Uh, that's a, I, okay, so quick note, this is a bad place for library. Um, you should have built it, I'd say here. You never want it anywhere near the combat lines because that way if you get attacked, you don't lose the library research. Um, well, armored cars are slightly better than, than either of the two cav for combat, for like direct combat, so that's good. Yeah, this army comp is really bad. This entire group is countered by, uh, other than the heavy cab itself, this entire group, literally everything in this column, this column, this column, this, 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 this and this is all countered by heavy cav. So this, <laughs> this unit comp is uh, quite poor. Your unit comp is not good, but it's not as bad, let's put it that way. Is your Patriot there? Good. Your Patriot has the plus six armor. Good. Um, I'd like to see you be researching one of these two. They're pretty powerful upgrades. Um, supply combat and assimilation benefits. It doesn't say what they are, but I believe it's um, plus two attack, plus two armor if you go uh, socialism slash what's it called? Comrade. And then this is a range bonus and a healing bonus as well. A healing benefit. So that's really strong as well. Well, the army comp's not getting any better. Uh, so the sort of last thing I think of note is that you have this giant army and it's not doing anything. So like, you, you could just go up here, and you could just go in and kill all of this, take this city, and then take this city, and then take this city, and then take this city, and you win the game. Right? But you're not doing that, you're just, they're just sitting there. Um, your army is enormous. Um, most games at, let's say, the skill level of Dawn, as an example, I don't, maybe you've played against Dawn, because I know you haven't played against me, so it's hard to use me as a reference point. But the skill levels of, in sort of, in Dawn's, in Dawn's skill level, uh, the games will end before the armies are this big. And the reason is because if an army is this big, it can take over a player's entire, like, empire. Because the army is big enough to do that. Um, especially because you hit industrial first, and you had uh, Statue of Liberty, which means you got instant tanks, instant armored cars, instant these guys and these guys um, from your previous units, so that's a massive upgrade. Tanks are extremely powerful. Armored cars were a pretty decent upgrade over uh, light cab as well, because they have ranged attacks and they're slightly, <coughs> they're slightly more durable. So... Like, I, you could have gone in with your age 6 spike, with your industrial age spike. Like, when when you hit 6, you became extremely powerful with Statue of Liberty. And even if you didn't have Statue of Liberty, you could have um, just researched the unit upgrades um, like at your, your buildings. So honestly, at this point, I would use 3,000 wealth to buy a bunch of oil and maybe buy a little bit of timber but not much timber because it's really expensive and you already have lots of units that cost timber. Um, I would just click this, click this, click this, and then click this. And over here, I'd, I don't think you can afford to auto queue. Maybe just add one or two of these. Just click tank and infinite queue it and click tank and infinite queue it, and then attack him, because you have the upper hand. Um, 
you could actually before you attack him, you should probably research this. So just buy some oil, research that. Um, yeah, you're you're just setting in all these units, and you're not actually using them to do anything. So units that don't do anything are a waste of resources. Your units. Why is this so damaged? I wasn't paying attention apparently. Oh, also research that to get the armor bonus. So just cycle through tab. Oh, you've been pretty good. You've researched like everything. That's good. Oh, this guy. Uh, he's still missing a lot of stuff. Okay, now your army's getting so big that it probably doesn't fit in one one group if you keep building units. That's that's my guess. You seem to have not control grouped it onto anything. Yeah, there's no control group active for this unit, this army. And yes, yeah, so you, if you if you have a look here, this tank isn't selected because your army is now too big. Which means the limit is 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 4. I don't know why that number, but... Oh, 64, yeah, that makes sense. So the army size limit is 64 for one group, and you've exceeded it. <coughs> but if you take away the siege, if you put them in their own group, um, then that would allow you to probably include the last few guys. But yeah, in any case, you are about to pop age 7, so you should definitely go here and like threaten him, because he has horses and you have now age 2 tanks. Or age 7 tanks, depending on how you want to see it, and age 7 units. So research this, well... Research this while you're researching this, just pop over here and just wipe him out. Um, your army is, is accomplishing nothing by sitting there. And you should really have a temple at this city. And you have a temple here, which is good. You're building way too many forts. Uh, you don't need all of this defensive stuff, because you can literally just win the game right now with this army. Um, even if you don't know what he has, if you have an army this big, it's almost certain the other guy doesn't have an army this big because <laughs> it it is really hard to build an army this big, um, especially when you have a tech lead. Like you know he's not an age seven yet. You can see he's going age six to seven, so you know he's not seven yet. You know he doesn't have Statue of Liberty because you have Statue of Liberty, and you know he has less pop cap than you do because you have Colossus. You know for a fact that like you almost definitely have a bigger army than him and you know for a fact that the army is high attack you will win this fight because your army is roughly balanced when your army comp is roughly balanced it all comes down to numbers um, what's your armor level? Your arm if you research this your armor level is going to be the best in the game um, even if he matches that you have more you have more guys and they're high attack level so um, I don't know, your reinforcements are like, you need to rally point these to be like over here or something, and you need these to be in their own separate group or something, because you have no control groups. You're kind of just using your guys all together, which is not the worst thing ever, but... Um, I definitely recommend all of your your seeds should be in its own group, <coughs> so that you can control them separately. Um, and specifically with your army formation, once you're holding down the right mouse button, you can use the scroll wheel to like change the the layout of the army, like change how much they spread out. So right now you have this awkward one vehicle, which you can see near the front, which is on its own like layer. So just scroll back one, and that'll make it a uh, two, like a, a two deep thing. Um, <coughs> the other thing is, oh, it's not pausing when I do that. Okay, let's let's quickly pause. So one thing you can do if you're trying to change your unit stance, if you want to do it globally, the the easiest way to do that is to go into the options and just click one of these buttons. Like you might want to put them on. I'd recommend either defensive or stand ground. I think if you're not sure what you're doing too much, then defensive is much better. But definitely I don't like the fact, the fact you have um, aggressive stance on. 
Oh, uh, is it just means that your infantry are gonna like run forward because they have less range. Um, and you want your tanks to be at the front. Um, and since you don't have many tanks, you probably also want your armored cars to be at the front. You definitely don't want your bazookas to be at the front. Their range is nine, but the range of like most of the other units is roughly twelve or thirteen. Yeah, there you go. That's thirteen. That's twelve. The tanks are thirteen. So the bazookas, to try and hit things, they're going to like run up here and they're going to be outranged. Um, so to prevent that, you can just, well, to reduce that, you keep them in either defensive or if you want to eliminate it, you keep them in stand ground. So let's keep playing through. You're definitely going to win this fight, 100%. Because his army comp sucks, it's low attack and you have more guys. It's, it's literally not possible for him to win this fight. And he has bombers, not fighters, so the bombers aren't going to do anything either. They can bomb your readout, but you don't care because you're about to win the game. Uh, some of these guys aren't doing anything, so like I'd like to see you move these guys forward. When you have so many units that you've won this fight this convincingly, look at all these bodies, dude. Uh, you've you've won this fight, and then some. You can be really reckless. You can be really aggressive. You could send your entire army and just like say sit here. Or maybe not that close, but like say you tell them to sit here, or you tell them to like sit there. <coughs> and then you tell your siege to attack the city. And then you just win the game. Um, a competent player on the other side versus even a half competent player on who's controlling red. The, the blue player can never win from this position. Um, unless, oh he's in age 7. Unless he cheeses your capital, that's the only way he can he can win right now. <coughs> because to build this many units, sorry, he has to look at look at how many units you have. You have more than I can select. You have like a hundred units here or something. To build a hundred units is impossible from his position. Um, it takes too much time, and the the thing is, he has to build more than a hundred because he has a low attack level. So he has to build like 120 units to win the fight. But he can't do that. So you, you're just, you, your, your goal here, because he can't produce units, he's on a... His current bottleneck is time. Usually it would be resources, but because you both have this giant float, his bottleneck is actually time and timber. But he has wealth, so the timber the timber's irrelevant. When the bottleneck for the enemy player is time, you want to play faster. So you have all these units, your bottleneck is, well I guess your bottleneck is kind of also time. Um, you have the army, you have the resources, so you want to just attack a city. Don't don't kill the siege factory, the siege factory doesn't build anything you care about. And these don't build enough units that they threaten your units here. So just get all of your non-siege units to like walk up here, spread them out using the scroll wheel like that. Just set, get them to sit like there or something. Get all your siege to attack the city, instantly cap the city. <coughs> Once the city is instantly capped, just <coughs> leave a few guys behind. Like you can um take all of these, just rather point them here, like next to the city. <coughs> and just put them on infinite queue. Don't do this, don't don't queue three units, just pick queue like that that infinite queue. That 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 infinite queue, whatever you want. Um Based on your current resources, I would probably go one, oh, one, two, three, infinite queue. So the first three units, infinite queue, all three of those. And again, just rather point them there. Um, this one, I'd probably just infinite queue tanks. But you can do uh, armored caravan tanks if you want. And just rather point them there with an infinite queue. And then your reinforcements, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> your reinforcements can hold the city. And then your army can move on to <coughs> probably here. What do you see? What do you know? Okay, you know the entire thing. Yeah, so your army can move on to here. It'll take you like 30 seconds to reduce the city <laughs> from here. Because you have so many units and you have a bunch of siege as well. <coughs> so yeah, just, just constantly be moving up with these troops. There you go, you surrounded. Um, so the biggest thing is I want to look at a speed, and that's 
That's funny because that's only slightly slower than me. <laughs> um, uh, military graph is the biggest thing. So right here, you have this giant lead, and then that continued for the rest of the game, but you didn't fight him until here. So once you had this lead here, I wanted to see you actually fight him. Um, territory resource, I guess, not that important. Economic, yeah, you bested him a little bit, mostly on knowledge. You had better tech throughout the whole game. So, alright. Quick recap of, of things to <coughs> to work on. Um, at the start of the game... Oh, I can't really show you anymore, but... Usually science one is the way to go. Um, your, your civic and military research is sort of out of order. You want to research them just before you're trying to use that technology to do something because the technology in itself isn't that valuable um, the only in only these two are like inherently valuable because um, science makes everything cheap all the other research make uh, cheaper and faster and it makes your scout line of sight bigger and it makes your ruins bonuses bigger so like if you have lots of resources and no specific goals science is always useful and uh, and a bigger commerce cap is always useful as well because if you're constantly just expanding without like if you're just mindlessly building more buildings more commerce is good but like if you're if you're not building a city you don't need civic yet you can research it later so you go science and then civic if you pretend these are science and civic obviously they're not on this current screen um, and then you kept researching military when you weren't hitting pop cap and you weren't about to hit pop cap. If you're about to hit pop cap, it makes sense to research military. But you weren't about to hit pop cap. Um, and you, like, uh, I can't show you because the game's over. But buildings that use military one are like barracks, stable, um, tower. You didn't build any of those after researching military one. So it just didn't. Like, it doesn't achieve anything to research it at that time. Just research it later when you, you're going to use it for something. Um, I think the unmanned farms are inefficient. Uh, Two-man woodcutters camp, definitely inefficient. Um, build your cities. Oh, you can see the whole map because you won. Uh, build your, your cities in more economically favorable locations, like near this forest, near this forest. Um, Himalayas makes this really easy. On other maps, you kind of have to guess a little bit more, unless you scout it out first. But on Himalayas, you know for sure, if you just build like near the edge of the map, and like near where the existing forest line is, like this is sort of a forest line here, if you build near that line, then you have access to timber, instead of having this tiny two-man woodcutter's camp, which is incredibly inefficient. Um, don't have massive floats. Use the resource floats to build more buildings or build military unit there, military units or research things. Um, press tab a lot to like just cycle through things to research. Um, I think that's really the biggest things. Oh, and then when you have a giant army, use your giant army. <laughs> uh, that's that's really the biggest things to work on. Um. And there's a, like a lot of other things in there, but they're not as important as all the things I just mentioned. So hopefully that helps you. Um, I I don't know if this is your friend again because your names are weird. So if this is actually your friend, I can go back and give him his own replay analysis. Or I guess you'll be watching as well your own replay analysis um, of either this replay or another replay if you prefer. Um, but yeah, I, Don Don got all the teaching because he's a patron. I, I can only do one replay for non-patrons. Um, and then if I get like a thousand people, obviously I can't do a thousand replays, so you guys are lucky for now you get a free replay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, and obviously I'm happy to just answer questions and stuff in the chat.